Howdy everybody, welcome back to another round of Accounting 1101 Financial Accounting. I'm Professor Martin. As always, we are wrapping up today our topic on adjusting entries. We've learned all kinds of adjusting entries and now we've come to the end where it's time to fold all of those into our trial balance. And we're going to do that by creating an adjusted trial balance. Now, we've had a Four videos, I think, so far on adjusting entries. We gave an overview of the adjusting process. We had a video where we talked about adjusting entries for accruals. We had a video for deferrals, and we wrapped it up with a video on depreciating fixed assets. If you haven't had the opportunity to look at those videos, I suggest you go back and view all of those before you continue on. That way you know the hows and the whys behind all of these entries that we made how to make them, why we made them. With that being said, we need to fold them into the unadjusted trial balance. We're gonna take all of our adjusting entries and post them so we can add them into our trial balance and make an adjusted trial balance. And so that's kind of where we began our uh, series on adjusting entries. We began with that unadjusted trial balance. We made our adjusting entries. Now it's time to make that adjusted trial balance. And we're going to do that by posting our adjusting entries and then we'll have our adjusted trial balance in the next chapter i'm going to show you how to take those adjusted trial balances and make financial statements and then we'll talk about closing the books and then guess what we will be pretty much done with the accounting cycle and then since it's accounting what will come after that we just do it all over again we do it all over again the following month or the following period and so accounting in some ways is kind of like a, the uh, character from Greek mythology. Uh, I can't remember the, the, the dude's name, but he was the one who rolled the boulder up the hill. He was condemned to all eternity to roll the boulder up the hill and it would roll back down and he would just roll it back up. Sisyphus, I think was the, the uh, character's name. That's kind of like what life is like in accounting. You do an entire month of accounting and then the next month you do it all over again and, and until you retire for all your working eternity. So the adjusted trial balance. Here's what we're trying to make right here. We're trying to reflect all of the uh, good adjusting entries that we made. And we're trying to once again check and make sure that debits are equal to credit. And you can see uh, if we do it correctly, we should equal 43,400. So I've got a spreadsheet put together. I'm going to walk you through posting our adjusting entries. I'm going to walk you through creating that adjusted trial balance and hopefully it'll go off without any kind of problem. Now I've posted my spreadsheet to Canvas. You can go ahead and download that and follow along if you like. If you'd like to work ahead and try it on your own, hey, I'm up for some wildcatting. Go ahead and try it and see if you can get it and compare yours to mine. And hopefully we both end up correct. And so let me go ahead and pull up the accounting spreadsheet here. And there we go. A couple of tabs, I'll walk you through what's going on. Uh, we have the journal tab where I've got all of my adjusting entries written out. And again, I covered all of these in the videos. If you don't remember how uh, we made these or what we were doing, you can go back and look at that. I have my adjusted trial balance, which right now doesn't have anything in it. And then I have my ledger accounts that reflect everything we've done for the month of November and December, everything up to now. So. We are going to begin by posting entries one by one. Remember the posting process, we're copying. Posting is a fancy word for copying. Again, the computer will do it for you most of the time in a computerized accounting system. You make the entry, you post it, and it will carry everything over automatically. But we're going to do it manually because we are glutton for punishment here in Accounting 1101. Accounts receivable, we got a debit of 500. We'll find that asset ledger account for accounts receivable. And it's going to be at the end of the period when we made that entry, December 31. Now under item, I'm going to fill in adjusting. So we know that it was an adjusting entry. Normally we haven't put anything in there because they're just regular uh, run of the mill journal entries. But now we have adjusting entries. We're gonna label it as an adjusting entry. Next week, we'll talk about closing entries and we would label a closing entry with closing. Yeah. We also have correcting entries. Maybe I'm making an, uh, an entry to fix an error. I would put correcting under item there. But now, now we're just going to put adjusting. Uh, page number of our journal. Let's make that page number three. Why not? And there we go. 
go. Page number three. We'll make page number three our adjusting entries here. Page number three, we have a $500 debit. So our new balance is going to be 2720. Zoom in so you can see a little bit better though. There we go. Our adjusting entry, page number three, $500 debit, 2720. We're talking account number 12. Posted. Fees earned. We have a $500 credit. In December 31. Adjusting. Page number three, $500 credit. Ooh, too many zeros equal. Add that in. There we go. So entry number one, adjusting entry number one is posted, recording the accrued fees, adding in some revenue that we hadn't recorded yet. Next one up, December 31, we have a debit to wages expense. And again, if you want to work ahead, you're welcome to do that. And then you can come back and check your answers at the end. We've got wages expense going on here. How much was that? 250. Add that in. New balance of 4,525. That was account number 51. And we've posted it. Wages payable is going to go up by 250 according to the entry. So we'll find wages payable. And we will add in 250. I spelled that wrong. Is that right? There we go. 250. New balance of 250. Again. I'm copying that credit over exactly as I've written it in the journal. I'm not flipping it. I'm not reversing it. it copies over exactly. Account number or entry number three, I should say, we have a debit to unearned rent of 120. Unearned rent is a liability. So I'm going to look for that under the liabilities. And the debit was 120. Yep. So now we only have 240 left in that unearned rent account. Account number 23, we posted it. We got rent revenue of 120. Rent revenue is a revenue account. We'll find our revenue ledger here. 120. There we go. So moving right along here. That was account number 42. Supplies expense. We have a debit for 1240. Find that account over here. You know, 1240. I forgot my number. 1240. So. If I'm going too fast, you're welcome to pause the video as you need to. Rewind it. Whatever you need to do. Here's my posting to account number 52. It's going to be a credit on the other side of that entry to supplies. Find my supplies account. December 31. And adjusting. Posting reference page number three. Credit of 1240. New balance is 760 bucks in my supplies account. Posted it account 14. Two more to go here. Moving right along. December 31, we have a debit to insurance expense, 200. Find that account. Remember, we used up a month of that insurance. I've forgotten the number. 200. There we go. 55. Our account number on that one. Take away 200 of prepaid insurance. Prepaid insurance is an asset. Now we have 2200. Wrong side. 2200 left. 2,400 beginning balance, we subtracted out 200. We're left with a $2,200 balance in prepaid insurance. I'll we'll post that to account 15. One more here, we have our depreciation entry that we just learned about in our prior video. 
and we have a $50 debit to depreciation expense. There's my account. Account number 56 right there. And then we have the accumulated depreciation account. Remember, that is a contra asset. We're going to find that underneath assets, and it's going to carry a normal balance on the opposite side of what an asset normally would carry, which means it's going to have a credit normal balance. There we go. I got office equipment right there. We're going to date December 31. And we have a $50 credit. Book value would be $1,750 on that office equipment. $1,800 minus our $50 in accumulated depreciation. So that was account number 19. We've posted all of the adjusting entries to their respective ledger balances. And now we are done. It's time to total up everything and make our adjusted trial balance. And that reflects all our adjusting entries. So again, we have our ending balances here. Our ending balance is kind of whatever we have at the end. You can see our ending balance. We've been kind of keeping track of it as we go along in that balance column there. So let's go ahead and fill in everything. Again, we're going to pull it. If it's a debit on the ending balance, we've got to make sure it's a debit on the adjusted trial balance here. So we'll start pulling the numbers. We've got cash. Looks like a 2065 ending balance. We have an AR, account receivable, 2,720. Supplies, 760 in our ending balance there. We got prepaid insurance, 2,200, I believe was our number on that. We got land, 20,000 on the land. We got office equipment. Now, if you're going to booger up the adjusted trial balance, or any trial balance really, it's probably going to happen right here. It's going to happen on the accumulated depreciation, because remember, that's a contra. You may be tempted to put your number in on the debit side, but it's a contra, has a credit normal balance. So we need to put that on the credit side, as we see right here, credit at 50. Accounts payable. Should also have a credit balance, a normal credit balance. We'll plug that in. Wages payable, exact same idea. And unearned rent, also a liability. Normal credit balance. Capital will also have a normal credit balance as an equity account. And then drawing is a contra equity account. It's going to be on the opposite side though. Then we just plug in our income statement accounts. We got fees earned. Fees earned will have a credit balance. And then rent revenue will also have a credit balance. Expenses we know have normal debit balances. We'll pick up all of those and make sure we get them. First off, wages, supplies, rent, utilities, We have insurance, depreciation, and finally, miscellaneous. So, we've picked up all of the ending balances on every single account. The adjusted ending balances. We've carried them over on the appropriate side, wherever uh, side that they were on. Now on the balance in the ledger, we carry that number over on the either debit or credit side. And again, all these numbers are on the normal balance side. Normal balance being the side the account goes up on. If we've done everything correctly, we played our cards right, the two sides ought to add up and be equal. And so cross your fingers, say a prayer to the accounting gods that we are in fact in balance here. And just go ahead and add up column number one, our debit column. 43,400. We'll add up column number two. 
okay, we're in balance. We have created the adjusted trial balance. Now, there might be times where you don't balance, and that could happen maybe if you transpose the number. And like, for, for instance, uh, we have, uh, what would be a good number to transpose here? How about this 985, uh, 760, let's do that one. Uh, let's say the balance is 760, but you typed it in as 670. That is a transposed number. You'll notice at the bottom, you have a difference here. If you're ever off on a trial balance, step number one is to calculate the difference between the two. And so my difference here, you'll notice is 90. A little trick for you. You calculate the difference and you divide by nine. There's my difference, I'm gonna divide by nine. If I get an equal number without any kind of decimal points, if it's an equal number, then chances are you've transposed the number. And you need to go through and look and make sure you didn't transpose the number and flip a number around. And so that's the divide by nine trick. Uh, go ahead and put everything back to normal. Sometimes you're off on the trial balance and it's not because you transposed the number, it's because you forgot to uh, book one part of the entry. Maybe you booked the debit side, but not the credit side. And in those cases, you can calculate the difference and go looking for that specific number in the entries to see if you can find it. Uh, another instance might be where you book both numbers to the same side, and that would also cause your trial balance to be off. So again, the whole point behind the trial balance is just to see if your accounting system is equal in debits and credits. It doesn't tell you if the entries you made are correct, it just says that you've got everything in balance. So uh, still very helpful. We need to do that before we go any further and make our financial statements. So next time, we're going to take that adjusted trial balance we just made, and we're gonna make financial statements out of it. We're gonna make that income statement. We're gonna make that statement of equity. We're gonna make that balance sheet. That'll be in our next video. We'll kick that off next week. As always, if you had any issues with that, making your trial balance, if you had any issues on getting those adjusting entries posted, I'd be happy to help you work through any of those issues. Reach out to me and we'll have a little chat. And next up, as I said, we're going to be making some financial statements. It'll be good times ahead. I hope to see you back here for that. Until then, take care, everybody.